Hello, I'm Kellen, and I'm going to talk about the surprising performance of simple baselines for misinformation detection. This is work I did with Jacob Danovich and Rehane Robani. The backstory here is that we were working to develop a multimodal model for misinformation detection, but we kept finding that it wasn't working better than our baseline. So we looked at the literature and we found that actually the baseline seemed to be competitive with many of the results there too. So we began investigating this further and that led to this paper. Our main finding is that pre-chain language models, especially transformer-based ones, can be competitive with state-of-the-art methods for misinformation detection. And in seven experiments, they actually perform better. In general, they're good when the content of the test data is similar to the training data. And they're not so good when the test data is quite different. So for example, when it's a completely different topic. We also find some issues with two standard data sets, Twitter 15 and Twitter 16, in that they can be a bit unrealistic and may have potential leakage. So we propose a, a simple test to help detect this issue in other data sets. We also package our framework to help others use it for baseline in their own work, in particular by publishing both the, the code that we used to run our experiments and also the exact splits that we used so that others can compare their models with the exact same data. Overall, we hope that this work will highlight the importance of both improved algorithms, but also thorough data science and careful experiments. The outline for the rest of this presentation is that I'm going to talk about the state of the art models that we compare with, then language models and data sets. So those three are the main components of our experiments. Then I'm going to talk about the results on misinformation detection, then the results on investigating the data sets themselves, and finally some concluding thoughts. So for state-of-the-art models, we took the best model that we could find on each data set and split that we do experiments on. In particular, that's these eight models here. And just to note, the citation numbers on this slide and in the rest of the presentation match the numbers in the paper. All of these models are from 2020, except for the model of Shuayal, which is from 2019. So they're all quite recent. And most of them use text, as well as in many cases, other types of data, such as propagation information and user information. We compare these with nine language models. Most of these are transformer-based, such as the famous BERT model. There's also one that's a, an earlier language model, ELMO, which is LSTM-based. These models can be roughly split into three size categories. So on the large end, or at least relative to the other models, we have CT BERT, Funnel, and Roberta which range from 340 million parameters to 468 million. Then in the middle, we have BERT, BERT Tweet, Declutter, and ELMO with 94 million to 135 million parameters. And finally, there's two smaller models. So Albert with 17 million parameters, and BERT Tiny with 4 million. We run experiments on these data sets. Several of these data sets we split in different ways to compare with different state of the art models. So, to evaluate them on the same experimental setting that they used in their papers. There's also one data set here that isn't misinformation, WNUT 2020. So, that one is for detecting informative COVID 19 tweets. So, tweets that contain information about reported cases or deaths or things like that.
So here's our results, starting with the results on the FEM data set. So to explain the table, the first row, SOTA, stands for state of the art. So that's the state of the art models that we're comparing with. Then the other rows are our nine language models. And the columns correspond to different ways of splitting the FEM data set. So for example, T slash F is taking the true and false labels. R slash NR is taking the rumor and non-rumor labels. Then three way is taking three of the labels and four way is taking all four of the labels. There's also one split here that's a bit different from the others, the FEM5 LC split. In this split, unlike the others where you split train and test randomly, here, the training set is for real world events, the tweets about them. And then the test set is a completely different real world event. So it, it's not a random split. What we see here is that in general, the language models do quite well. Roberta in particular is, gives the best performance on four out of the five experiments. And there's several others that give perform good performance too. So for example, CTBERT and declutter. And in several of these cases, they're giving significantly better performance than the state of the art model. So for example, in uh, FEM9 T slash F, we're getting about 10 percentage points better with Roberta. And then in FEM5 three-way, we get about 20 percentage points better. On the other hand, with the event-based split, FEM5 LC, the state of the art model is significantly better. So about 20 percentage points better than most of the language models. Here's the results on the other data sets. Again, we see in many cases, the language models do quite well. So we get the best performance with a language model on Gossip Cop and two splits of Twitter 15 and Twitter 16. Uh, again, Roberta is doing the best uh, with other good ones like CT Bert and Bert Tweet. Then there's also some data sets where the state of the art model is performing better, and particularly PolitiFact, Twitter for 15, with all the labels rather than just the true and false labels, and likewise, Twitter 16. And then in WNUT 2020, the, the state of the art model is also performing better than the language models we tested. But in this case, the state of the art model actually is a language model. So it's a, a carefully tuned version of CTBER. So in general, like I touched on before, language models generalize quite well to data sets with similar content. For example, most of the theme splits in WNOT 2020. On the other hand, they don't do very well when the content is different, most notably the theme 5 LC split, where it was a completely different event. Then in between, you have data sets where the test data is a little bit different, but not as different as theme 5 LC, such as PolitiFact and Gossip Cop. And there you have more mixed results. So uh, on PolitiFact, the, the state of the art model is doing the best. On Gossip Cop, uh, the language model is doing the best. In the real world, both of these things are important. So the different content setting is important for detecting new and unknown misinformation. But similar content is also really important because you may already know about some sort of misinformation or some conspiracy theory but you'd still like to flag, for example, new tweets about it. In the course of doing these experiments, we found a, an issue with Twitter 15 and Twitter 16. In particular, the examples from different classes were collected at very different times, a matter of months or even years different in some cases. And what that means is that knowing the date is very informative towards knowing the class label. Much more informative than it would be in the real world, where knowing the, the date of a tweet doesn't really tell you much about whether it's true or false. 
for example, we tested this with a random forest on the first three digits of the tweet IDs, which contain information about the date. So knowing the first three digits of the tweet ID, it gives you a date down to about a, an accuracy of about uh, two or three days. Now these are balanced data sets. So what we would sort of expect is that knowing the date wouldn't really be better than random. So it would have something like 25% F1. But in fact, we see that knowing the date is gives much, much more information than that, right? especially on Twitter 16, where the state of the art result is 92.4 F1. And three digits of the tweet ID can give you almost the same performance as that. So it gets to 90.8 F1. Of course, in the real world, we aren't going to classify the tweet IDs, but it's difficult to ensure that we aren't classifying information that's somehow correlated with time. So for example, if we look at tweets that contain the words Clinton or Trump, we see that there's zero tweets with true or false labels and these words in the Twitter 15 data set, which obviously doesn't match the real world. So there's clearly both true and false stories about both of these people. The reason for this is that the true and false labels were collected earlier before the 2016 election, US election, while the unverified and non-rumored labels were collected uh, during the election campaigns when there was much more discussion of these two people. Fortunately, other data sets are more realistic. So for example, PolitiFact, a, a random guess would give you about 50% performance. And we still get better than random by knowing the date. So we get about 70, 75. But it, it's significantly worse than the state of the art result, which is uh, above 92. And then there's other data sets like WNUT 2020, where knowing the date doesn't give you any information at all. So here, random is uh, about 51, and knowing the date uh, down to a, an accuracy of a, a couple of days is the same as random. So in general, we think this is an issue that's important to be aware of, both for conducting experiments, so making sure that the, model, your, the models that you're testing aren't leaking somehow, and also for constructing new data sets. So this issue could be avoided entirely by collecting data from all the different classes uh, around the same time. In conclusion, this work isn't to say that we should just use language models. So the state of the art models that we've compared with here often have much more functionality than the language models do. For example, they can have uh, explainability, they can do early detection, and like uh, I talked about, they can be much better at uh, topics that uh, aren't in the training data. But we hope this will highlight the need for careful experiments, both in terms of baselines, so trying to compare with the, the strongest possible baselines, and in careful analysis of the data sets to avoid issues like this temporal leakage. In general, we hope that this will encourage future work on both new models and also work that will facilitate better, more realistic experiments. So experiments that are closer to the application that we really want to solve. Thank you. I hope to discuss with you further in the Q&A session.